Thank you. That's a nice uh, introduction and welcome and everything. And welcome back to you as well for coming here today. And uh, yes, I'll be talking about, uh, I'm kind of trying to turn the things a little bit around and like instead of um, saying that, okay, we're going to uh, put more devices on the internet and just like add more and more and then let them talk to each other and stuff like that. And I'm kind of trying to turn it a little bit around and see what we can actually do with things that are already there and what we can do with uh, um, things that, uh, how we can make them talk to each other easier uh, as well. Uh, and the thing is that when I was making this presentation, I actually had a kind of a little bit of uh, uh, trouble uh, making it cool enough or like, you know, e easy, to understand or, you know, kind of uh, snappy in a way, you know. So I kind of started doodling on a piece of paper, just drawing things and everything. And then after like 20 minutes or something, I just realized that maybe, well, that's maybe it's a good idea. So I ended up drawing most of the presentation. I mean, that's the only thing that is actually kind of uh, not drawn in a way, uh, the only slide. The rest of them is uh, drawn by hand. So. The other problem I had was actually how to do that f fun enough. So I constructed the whole thing as a uh, kind of story. So I'm going to tell you a story. And uh, as a good, any kind of story, you would usually in introdu introduce the uh, characters that are in, in that story. So here we go. Um, the first one is you. This is kind of, I, I really like starting with this guy because it kind of sets your uh, expectations for the rest of the drawings. And uh, if you read the abstract and you, you, you've seen what, what, what I was uh, writing there, it was uh, another natural guy to have in the story would be a some kind of router, something that would contribute to connecting things and let them talk to each other and stuff. Next one would be a, um, I don't know, call it a phone or call it a tablet, whatever it is. It's a mobile phone. Let's say it is that thing. Next one is the um, washing machine. Because again, in my abstract, I was talking about that washing machine, talking to a vacuum cleaner and talking to you and doing things like that. And uh, well, that's the next one. And the last one is uh, this little funny thing. It's not a mo some kind of molecular structure for some kind of weird drug. It's more like... Uh, uh, things connected to each other, like uh, different concepts connected to each other in a w uh, form of a graph. In this case, well, I wrote DBpedia on it because it's one of them, like linked data kind of um, uh, structure, but it could have been anything else really uh, as well. Any kind of linked data, basically. So, yeah, well, that guy, he's kind of talkative, so you'll, you, you, you'll see uh, <coughs> the, the vacuum cleaner. Talkative vacuum cleaner, that's, that's normal, right? So the first act, uh, the first part is the internet of things. So the things, the way it usually uh, starts, the way it actually is right now, right? So then you normally would start doing kind of internet of things thing with your, uh, your phone or your tablet or whatever it is like. Um, I was like, oh, I have a lot of sensors in that thing. Okay, well, what if I connect those to internet and let them uh, do stuff and send me different things and, you know, all that kind of thing. That's like usually entry level kind of thing, right? And then you go a little bit crazy and you do more stuff and more stuff. You end up collecting, connecting your uh, washing machine to the internet and that would send you like emails and saying like, hey, hello, you know, your laundry is ready and you, 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 that happens and this happens and, you know, do all that kind of things. And then you go a little bit more crazy and then your vacuum cleaner starts telling you stuff um, uh, like, well, you know, my I'm out of uh, vacuum bags or whatever. Um, and then you go more crazy and more crazy and then your router goes a little bit warm and then it's like, uh, you know, you're, you're like, you're having lots of uh, things talking there and like everything goes crazy. And, and the cool thing of the whole thing is that uh, all of them come come with uh, web, web uh, some kind of web, web API, and all of them they have like really attractive things, and they have like uh, REST 
APIs and SOAP and stuff and, you know, all that kind of cool things. And everything seems to be really fun, right? Uh, looks kind of like this. You have, uh, it's you again in the middle. You have all those devices and you have uh, an, a uh, web API on top of it and then you uh, you make the integration, you kind of make them talk to each other and make them uh, tell you things and tell some other people things and, you know, make, make it all work, right? After, uh, until you kind of realize that, well, that's quite a bit of work. And then you try to, you, you buy a new phone. And then you realize that that thing, that the that, that previous one had some kind of vendor lock on it, right? So it's not that easy to port to actually to, to use another phone, another thing with the, your uh, fancy thing that you have created your own. And then your vacuum cleaner gets a new API and then it just, you know, just doesn't talk to you anymore and speaks some weird language that you can't really understand or uh, give any commands in, right? Um, so basically what you do have is some kind of uh, maintenance problem, right? And it gets kind of a little bit rainy. So just, just from, from, from like pictures and fun, just to, to kind of a little bit more real example, this is, um, uh, this is a little piece of uh, the data I got from, uh, well, you can get too from uh, the Norwegian public transport uh, kind of system. They have this uh, uh, system that where you can look for bus stops and stops for trains and everything, and they would give you a... Uh, uh, the addresses and everything, all, all that kind of information, the, the time when the buses and trains and all the tra trams and all of them leave and come and all that kind of information, right? And then, well, that looks pretty cool, right? And this is a uh, rest and it's really nice. And on top of there, there is a X and Y. We people understand that, well, it's X and I, Y, it's probably, it's nothing to do with any kind of math equations or anything, that's uh, the coordinates. And, well, they look like that, so they must be coordinates for uh, in that and that projection and that and that uh, system and so on. And then you can uh, do something with it. And then you would just use that API and connect it to your, uh, I don't know, uh, water boiler. And then they would make you a fresh cup of uh, tea or whatever before the, like, half an hour before the, the bus leaves or whatever. You know, anything, right? Uh, but then the thing is that... <coughs> This is an example from another API. This is OpenStreetMap reverse, ge uh, uh, reverse geocoding of, uh, uh, of the places, which has uh, kind of similar things, and it also has the coordinates. But this time, it's Latin long, and they're a little bit looking a little bit different. And again, you as a human would be able to see that, OK, well, Latin long is probably the same as X and Y and the other one, and I can make them talk to each other, and I can make them um, uh, make them, make them, to convert them and everything, make them in the same system and use them as I want to and so on, right? But again, it's you doing that all. Computers don't understand. For computer, that's just a string with lots of numbers in it, so. So, the second part is that where the uh, semantic web or semantic meaning of data and linked data comes into the, into, into the play and uh, that weird looking uh, thing, uh, bubble with lots of data connected uh, with each other and to, to just to introduce what I actually mean by that or what you can actually do with that I just uh, had a simple really uh, simple example here which is like okay say that uh, it's a semantic uh, way of presenting it is just to making computer understand what you actually mean so when I say Frank I have told the computer that Frank is a uh, human, and human has some kind of uh, properties, right? And, uh, well, Anna is also uh, something else. It's uh, Anna, in this case, is mammal. But computer still doesn't know. I mean, we would know that, okay, human must be a mammal, so that means that Frank is a mammal as well. But computer doesn't know that, right? And we also don't know what's the difference, uh, what's the kind of connection between Frank and Anna uh, there anyway. Um, then we can add some more stuff. We can say like, okay, Frank uh, has a child that is Anna. And then computer would actually know that because everything is stored in, um, in usually in stored in triples. So you have like subject, predicate, and object. So it's like subject, 
uh, like Frank in this case, and then predicate is like well, has a child, and object would be Anna, and then Anna is mammal, so it's another triple, right? Still, there is nothing telling computer to say uh, to to understand that Frank is a mammal. But then we can do stuff. We can do stuff with this kind of. It gives us a lot of freedom to do that uh, kind of stuff to explain to computers. So. Uh, the moment you say that has uh, has child uh, can be applied only to mammals, for example, can be applied to anything else but just mammals, or at least to mammals, could be to other things as well, right? Um, then your reasoner, your uh, computer, logically can deduct that, okay, if has child can only be applied to mammals and it's applied to Frank, then Frank must be a mammal as well. So, going back to the example with the, with the uh, bus stops and everything, uh, that brings us to a little bit more uh, expanded edition of that JSON we saw uh, back earlier. Um, in this case, we add a little bit more. We add a little bit of tags telling computer what the things are, what, are, um, uh, what the context is, what we're talking about, we're kind of uh, specifying things with URIs. Um, we use the um, URIs to say that this thing I'm talking about is unique thing, and uh, the, the other place I'm talking is the same as that thing, and they should have different. Uh, they should have uh, similar properties, or they could be equal, or or whatever. So in this case, we're adding instead of um, uh, instead of just returning X and Y and Latin lawn and stuff. We add uh, a little a geo tag on top saying like, okay, we're gonna use something called geo. This is described at that URI, uh, URL on top of there. And um, um, those two things, latitude and longitude, in this case, you could have called them something else as well if you wanted to, uh, they are a part of geo. And then next time, uh, something else, uh, some other uh, interface would have would use X and Y. They would also um, refer to that geo thing and say that, well, hey, my X and Y things here, they're also geo, and their X is the same as lat, and Y is the same as uh, long, and so, and so on. And uh, making that easier for computers to itself to understand. And then you can use reasoners that are available out there uh, f to reason stuff, to, kn to, to actually to find out, to figure out more information, to pull more information about uh, some kind of things uh, just out of what information you give or what's available on the internet or use again DBpedia for example to add even more value to all those kind of data you have already. And well that kind of uh, thing, what, 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 what that um, bubbly thing I drew on the uh, on the slides is, so you can do a lot of things. You can um, ask, you, it gives you a freedom of asking uh, questions in a little bit more advanced uh, questions. I mean, you can ask, you can write really advanced queries because it would give you, um, uh, give you possibilities, like give me everything that has happened in uh, 1960 or give me all things that are have this property or anything that would in in relational database kind of role that would take you forever to 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 ask you can do that here much easier you can also again run reasoning you can do logical reasoning on that uh, all those triples and get more information and also it's written in such a way that both both people and computers can actually understand that. I mean, if we go back again, if you read that, you, you, it's kind of readable. I mean, it's, well, okay, it has URIs and stuff in it, but or URLs, but you can still understand what it is. I mean, okay, name, okay, well, that's the description, and there is a X and Y tags and everything, right? So both, of, both the humans and uh, computers can understand that as well. Um, so what you, what you have now is, uh, that thing in the middle is being controlled by a computer in a way. I mean, of course, you have to do some, some more stuff. You have to do add some more uh, logic and everything to it. But it's still mainly com uh, controlled by a computer. It's not you. You're somewhere out there at the 
uh, in the corner uh, enjoying the whole thing. Well, uh, yes. And well, this is this is pretty much it. And this is this is actually was supposed to be uh, was meant as uh, some kind of um, way to introduce uh, the semantic uh, linked data, semantic web kind of concept with uh, while looking at the Internet of Things thing. So you can actually what what you can do, what 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 kind of possibilities give you, and uh, see if you can uh, give it a try yourself. And that's pretty much it, really. Uh, any questions? Yes. Hi. Um, Hi. So, uh, devices uh, saying hi to uh, all the devices, right? Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about your security considerations here. Well, <laughs> that's uh, that. The, okay, um, the security consider considerations here are. Uh, it's pretty much the same as they would be in any kind of Internet of Things uh, things because. I don't really do anything extra with uh, with, uh, with 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 the APIs. So what I'm actually trying to say that you should add more, a little bit more information for computers to be able to understand what is what. But the security part is actually uh, that should be handled by the the guys uh, offering those APIs. So uh, it's well, yes, it is a problem. It, Security is a problem with Internet of Things, and there are things out on the Internet that shouldn't be on the Internet, like uh, anything being from being able con to control uh, heating uh, tanks in uh, in the hospitals or whatever. You can actually log in online and do that stuff. That's not supposed to be there, but that's that's a normal, general kind of security issue with the whole Internet of Things thing. Yeah, I'm also kind of thinking of um, when it comes to security, it's also also about uh, authentication and identity and yeah. trust and and uh, even if you're a, a, say a an, an developer or a, somebody who makes the things, mm. uh, you, you have to make sure that there's some kind of uh, identity authority in in co coming with the, the package, the, the device, saying that, yes, I am actually me. Yes, but uh, that's actually your power as a consumer to say, like, hey, I'm not going to buy that thing because that doesn't offer me any kind of security. I would actually go for something else that, act that has that instead. Well, that's uh, that's quite a that's not only Internet of Things problem. Well, the question was that, or the co the comment was that. Well, uh, I, I might yeah. say again. I, the, there is a general problem throughout the Internet of Things, and indeed, as you're going to say, that throughout the Internet, of people yeah. not really think about security. It's it's something that they implement something, they get it working, and and then somebody points out, how are you going to secure that? And they go, oh, we didn't think about that. We can add that on top. That's what usually <laughs> no, happens. No, you can't. And, yeah, well, you can. That's the thing. And uh, but the, the, the po my point is that that is kind of uh, yes, that problem is there, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, that kind of thing, what I'm talking about, has nothing to do with security. That should be there anyway. That's a separate thing, yes. Yeah, I'm just going to follow up on security, actually. Um, <laughs> 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 it's The thing is, it's like, um, you know, immunity of the flock. You know, if, if a lot of people have poor security, then everything is made with poor security. And uh, everybody is more uncertain and insecure, also the ones who actually try to be secure. <coughs> so, and we have an internet, and we have Microsoft and all the rest of the crap, uh, which has pure, poor security. Mm. And this, I mean, if I, if I, uh, the Wi-Fi is already quite vulnerable if you don't do a lot of things to make it yeah. less vulnerable. And then you have all these things, and uh, your enemies or just uh, pranks, whatever. They melt down your refrigerator, they uh, destroy your uh, room temperature yes. regulation, they break down your uh, everything. So, you know, uh, what can we do about that? Well, 
No, that's not. That's what I'm trying to uh, to to tell. Anyway, but yes, that should have been should should be uh, addressed. My personal opinion, and yes, the, the for example, wireless networks are not safe at all. I mean, I I do have another talk where I actually go through all those kind of things uh, with wireless security and uh, well, the, or the lack of thereof. Uh, so yeah, but. That's that's the general problem of Internet of Things, and that has to be uh, addressed in general. Yes. Yes, I will. Uh, my name is Knut Irving, and I will not talk about internet security. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I, I have an application developer perspective. Okay. Uh, so you had an advice or a work path on how to connect the things and the messages and keeping coherence. If I understood, I, I'm. Kind of, yeah, yeah okay. Of. So how do you suggest we should standardize this into more and more devices going on? Because today kind of is a suggestion, but it is not common, might not be common practice. And yes. it, you have this in all kinds of use cases from elderly support where you have a G GPS device yeah. and they w wander away because they are a dementia. And, and they, it's, it's obviously a benefit of having this technology because mm. you can find them much more easier instead of collecting Red Cross and all the volunteers to try to find them. And they might be dead before you, <laughs> you get them. Uh, and you have the other benefit, you have all these kind of uh, people with health issues where they need a device and they use their phone and they need this information yeah. to, to have a better self helped in life yes and this is maybe the core of some of this technology that you help people and you have to also sort out all these alarms and all this noise that you don't need to get what you actually consider as a help yes. do you how do you reflect on this well i mean the, 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 that's what it was actually uh, if we go a little bit back that was my point of uh, that's what I was kind of telling here. It's like all of them have web a API, but all of them have different APIs and different standards and everything. And that's what kind of I was trying to say somewhere here. Um, this is this is uh, this is a, actually a standard. Well, uh, uh, one of the ways, one of the attempts to standardize that is a JSON LD, which is like a JSON with the linked data add-on on, on top of it. Uh, which is a kind of standard that gives you both worlds. I mean, it says like, okay, you're gonna use JSON, that's fine. But uh, if you're gonna use that, please annotate things with, give us the contact, give your IDs and everything so we can actually, even though you don't call things the same, you can actually, both humans, I mean us and computers can actually still realize that uh, Latin long in one thing and X and Y in the other thing is actually the same because they are actually using, uh, referred to the same I kind of point to the same context. So this this is kind of the one of the attempts to standardize it. But yes, address exactly specifically that thing about x and y not actually being the same thing as latitude and longitude because in fact x and y are going to be some local coordinates somewhere yeah, exactly on a particular projection on yes. in the vicinity of Oslo, um, and so somewhere behind your. URLs, yeah. there needs to be something that says, well, actually, I'm using X and Y to mean this specific projection's yes. coordinates somewhere, and there needs to be enough information in yes. the back of all these URLs that you're linking with longitude, yeah. latitude, X and Y, that my software yeah. is going to be able to work out that, okay, your X and Y corresponds via the following horrible piece of GIS, fortunately standardized software, um, that I don't have to worry about the inside yeah. of the black box, but I can turn that X and Y into latitude but that's longitude all the way around. Yes. But all of that mm. depends on uh, how much of how much intelligence is my software going to need to know X and Y corresponds to lat and long when I'm talking to two different sources of data, one of which is describing the bus stop in terms of X and Y and those in lat and long, and I want to know are they the same thing, or are they 50 meters apart? Because I've got a bus stop and a tram stop, and one system talks in Latin and along the other X and Y. Mm. I've got to write software that's going to talk to these disparate systems, and the only way that this kind of system is going to give me a win is if, if I don't have to put application logic into my code yep. that goes, I'm writing a GIS. Oh crap! No, but okay, now I've got a lot of work. Yes. 
Um, it, but instead goes, I only have to consult the things here and they will somehow tell me how that maps between the two different schemas. That's How do you uh, solve that problem? And what, what's the language that's behind the those thing, That's what I was actually, I, I, I was looking at, that's why I was looking at the, at the, at the code right now, because, uh, well, Jason, uh, I removed to make it a little bit more easy, because uh, uh, on, on top of there, they were like, um, uh, they were like um, statements like ID, here is equals name, for example. That's why. That's what you actually uh, you can as as a vendor, the one that's supplying, the giving that, Jason. You would say that. Well, this is uh, I'm using here. Uh, well, name, but this is actually a ID in some other thing. And on top here, where you describe, where you make actually the geo, uh, for example, tag. You actually have a specification here. Uh, saying what it actually is, what kind of uh, languages it supports, what everything, all kind of things. And you don't have to add that. That's the point also, that you don't ha really have to add all that kind of things into your application, but you can actually uh, run like some kind of reasoning on top that would give you that kind of things given. I mean, it will look at that, okay, I have this statements, okay, th then this is that, and this is the other thing. And then it would add more statements kind of like this to your um uh, data in in the background which would uh, which you can actually go and ask later so you don't have to build all that thing into your application yes i mean this is just examples of course this is the examples from uh there this is a playground where you can add all that stuff and see how that kind of looks um but uh you can go there and look for more this is one of the ways of uh uh, standardizing that because there are like a language like RDF and RDFS and all that kind of things that do that in XML, but the 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 the, the, the JSON LD is one of the ways of doing that for JSON. And instead of adding extra XML stuff next to your JSON and saying that well this is that's how it's connected and everything, and making things complicated. But yeah, I want. Oh, one more. Or <laughs> I'm just considering the running short in time, but oh, sorry. Uh, so this is all micro data API stuff, right? I mean, that's one of the applications, really. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then you get into this whole thing where you have, in the example earlier, we had the things that were mammals but yeah. also things that were humans and had children. Yes. And humans is a thing that is a mammal. And uh, that's a tree I know of. It's yes. uh, taxonomy in biology. Yes, but your computer doesn't know that. That's the difference. Yeah, and my computer doesn't know that. But if you, make uh, if you have schemas for, uh, for things uh, that are domain-specific and that kind of tend to change over time, isn't there a risk that you're kind of building... Uh, Schema graveyards. Mm. Uh, well, the thing is that um, uh, yes, I mean we know a lot of things that I mean we take a lot of things for granted, which our computers don't, and uh, you either have to put. I mean, the, 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 everything depends on what kind of model you have, you give to your computer. You have to describe the whole reality. It kind of gets a little bit philosophical now, but I mean. Uh, it's uh, the way you describe and how much of the model of the real world you give to a computer because computer doesn't know that for 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 computers everything is just ones and zeros basically right and it has absolutely no idea that a mammal and human there 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 is a tree and there was Darwin back then and he did something and you know they they, they don't they don't so you have to actually tell somehow that things are connected in this way. And after that, it will be able logically to reason further on. So saying like, has child can only be applied to mammal gives it enough data to say that human is a mammal and Frank is a mammal or so, and so on and so things like that. Yes, but of course, but your model, I mean, that's just an example. The thing is that your model is never complete. Of course, but that's again, that's... Hmm. 
Hmm. Yep. No. So we have to wrap up here now. We are actually running over time. We should have started the next presentation already. So thank you for Rustam and um, a presentation that seems to raise concerns and questions. <laughs> That's thank very you. good. <laughs> thank you.